Hello. Hello. I, uh, I don't speak Beng Bengali. Language. What is your country, sir? Uh, Canada. Canada. So why you come our country? We need to any help us? No, tourists. That's good. Yeah, my so, holiday. So I'm walking down a bicycle street again, and I'm heading to a place called Fort Laubag. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it correctly. It's a mogul fort, and according to what I read, they began building it in the year 1677 or 1678. The guy, Canada. Yeah. And the man who started building it was a mogul prince. He eventually became the emperor, but he was the prince at the time. He was called away and he never finished the fort and another prince took over construction. But uh, this prince's daughter died at that time. So he thought it was an unlucky place and he also stopped construction. So it's kind of interesting that a fort that is uh, several hundred years old and one of the bigger monuments around here was never actually completed and never uh, really used. But it still exists today and I'm gonna go check it out. Well, I'm slowly making my way to uh, the fort that I want to visit, and I'm not getting there very fast though. I first have to get through this street behind me. As far as I can tell from Google Maps, I have to head that way with my back. So uh, let's give it a try. <laughs> At some point, I think I'm going to have to master the mysteries of the uh, rickshaw. They're very inexpensive to use, and though they may not go very quickly, you know, it'd be about the same pace as walking or faster than walking. The only problem, of course, is a language barrier. You have to tell the guy where it is you want to go. And then more problematic for me is then you then have to discuss the price. And I'm kind of a lazy person in that regard. I hate bargaining over prices. I just want to know what the price is and then I'll pay it. I hate having to talk about the price all the time. So I often end up walking through these streets when a normal person would be sitting and uh, riding in comfort. And so, after a pretty interesting walk, I think I've made it to Lalbag Fort. Here is a piece of it up there behind the wall. Now that I've thought about it, I'm pretty sure that that would not be the original name of this fort. They call it Lalbag Fort because it's a fort and now it's located in the modern area that they call uh, Lalbag. Back when it was built in, the 16, in 1677, who knows what it was called. So this is the outside wall of the fort. First step is to find the entrance. Once I get to the entrance, I'm not entirely sure if I'm even going to go in. I went to a local museum the other day. And the price for locals was 20 taka, but for foreigners it was 500 taka, which is 25 times more than the local price. So it's pretty common for places in Asia to have two prices, one for the locals, quite low, and a higher price for uh, foreigners. And normally it's not a big deal, but I found the one the other day, 20 versus 500, you know, 25 times the price, that's a bit much. And I wasn't that interested in the museum anyway, so I didn't go in. So we're going to see uh, what the price is for this fort. And if it's too expensive to go in, I won't even bother. Walking here is more interesting than uh, the fort itself. I don't know if this is the uh, 
front entrance to Lalbag Fort. It could be, and at the moment it uh, seems to be closed. Along this street next to Lalbag Fort, you see kind of another side of Dhaka. There was a pizza parlor down there, a couple of fancy coffee places, a juice place. Here we have a real taste of ice cream and coffee. And right beside it, we have the Dark House. An exclusive themed restaurant, complete with skulls. And it looks like the uh, face from the movie Mask. That's quite an interesting place. Well, I'm shooting into the sun, so I don't know how well this will turn out, but I have found the festive entrance to Fort Lalbag. You can get yourself some balloons, and it looks like cotton candy, some toys for your children, and there's the uh, ticket window over there. Took a quick look. And I don't know, I think the price for locals is 20 taka, and for foreigners, 200 taka. So it's 10 times more. That's better than 25, and uh, I think I'll buy a ticket. I walked all this way, I might as well go in and uh, check it out. Now my first attempt was a failure, because we have these uh, ticket windows here. And there are the signs. But obviously nobody's selling any tickets here. I think I have to go uh, down in that direction. Yeah. And here is the gateway to the inside. Hi. Hello, how are you? Looks very quiet in there, very appealing. And a lot of people want to go in. So here's the real ticket window. And there's a long lineup of uh, customers. Look at this. So it looks like it's a very popular place to go in the evening. Feels like today is a uh, holiday or something. Well, considering the large crowds waiting to get in and the fact that it's four o'clock in the afternoon, I might not go into the fort at all. Just walking here was enough of an entertainment for me. But I just happened to see this sort of uh, long alleyway between two fences. And from here, I think you can go right into the fort and um, look through the fence. And it doesn't seem like you have to buy a ticket to get into this part. So you can kind of look around inside and uh, see everything without having to go inside. And there's the fence. If I stick my camera through, there is the uh, two or three structures of Lalbag Fort. I was, they generally say that there are three structures in here. There's like a uh, reception hall, and then the place where the uh, princess is buried, and then one other building but they've done some archaeological excavation and they found a lot more structures scattered around here so there used to be a lot more buildings at some point I'm 
One thing I like about this whole area, of course, is that it's so quiet in here. And I think that's why the, the Bangladeshis come in to visit. They get dressed up in their best clothes, like these people here, and sit on the grass and relax. And the one place I wouldn't mind going is behind it, I can see along the wall, all these people are sitting and walking along the top there. I don't know how they got up there. But I don't think I will go inside. It's nice just to see it from out here. It's enough. So that kind of brings me to the end of my uh, visit to the, uh, the Fort Lalbag. And uh, now it's time to start walking back to my hotel and uh, see what there is to see this way. We're still following along on the outside of the fort. So I honestly have no idea if this wall was part of the original fort or not. Somehow I doubt it, but uh, you never know. And I think this sort of signals the end of my little trek to uh, Lalbag Fort. I'm back on the street beside the uh, large prison. Seems like my uh, journey began here long ago. And I was going to say it's a bit quieter here than other places. And uh, yeah, got another couple kilometers to walk back to my hotel. But the sun is going down, so I won't be able to film much more. The end of uh, day three, Dhaka in the daylight. Lalbag Fort. Fort Labag. Fort Lalbag. Lalbag Fort. The fort that I want to visit. Lalbag Fort. Lalbag Fort. Lalbag Fort. Lalbag Fort. Fort Lalbag. Lalbag Fort. The fort Lalbag. Lalbag Fort. The bonus question from the last video was why do I put my sandals here? The answer, to keep out mice and rats. I had a lot of uh, nighttime visitors in this room and I was hoping that putting my sandals here would do a little bit to uh, keeping them out. Bonus question for this video. What is this object and what is it used for? Leave your answer in the comments below. Answer at the end of the next video.